I just came back from one of the biggest training events of the year 2024 in Dubai where I spoke to 100 plus millionaire traders and in today's video I will be breaking down the most important lessons that they have taught me throughout my career and in Dubai step by step. So let's start breaking this down lesson by lesson so you can start applying these principles to your own trading strategy. <music> Technical analysis don't mean shit if you don't fix your psychology. Guys, I've been speaking to so many traders and at some point it's also quite easy to filter out the profitable traders from the unprofitable traders, right? And there are so many people out there also on Twitter, YouTube, so many platforms, even some traders running their own community. And, it, and at some point you just quickly recognize the profitable from the unprofitable traders right even though some of them still act like they're profitable and i think the the the, the most common conception that we have on trading is that at the end of the day and i've said this many many times and every trader that i've been speaking to in dubai but just traders in general is is really agreeing with me on that is that i can teach every single donkey technical analysis honestly i swear to god even every single individual can create a reliable trading system that will be profitable over a longer period of time, right? With a decent win rate, a decent RR, easy to recognize triggers and that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, if you don't fix your psychology, if you don't master the art of discipline, patience, and just psychology in general, and that doesn't only have to do with trading, right? Also, you need to fix your psychology, your mental health, your, your discipline, and your patience in, in your real life in order to see it reflect back to trading. If you don't fix that, that technical analysis of yours, that, that profitable trading system of yours, it doesn't mean shit, guys. Honestly, I swear. And I really want to make sure that you guys truly get this, right? Every single one of yours that is currently watching this video either already has a profitable trading system or is currently developing one. And at the end of the day, every single one of yours will get towards a profitable trading system. And obviously, guys, that takes hard work and dedication as well. But where most traders fail is the psychology aspect of trading, right? Keeping your discipline in check, keeping your risk management in check. When you feel like shit, don't try and chase dopamine by getting behind the charts and opening up multiple trades. Don't revenge trade. Those are the kind of things where 99% of the traders that fail, fail on. Those traders that at the end of the day they quit, they don't quit because they can't make a proper technical analysis. Because that's the fun part, right? Drawing lines and seeing lines getting respected and then and, and drawing triggers and, and reversals and continuations and seeing it play out over time. That's the fun part of trading, studying that and learning that. But fixing your psychology, getting your mental health in, in, a, in a good place, fixing your discipline and patience and consistency, that's the part that sucks. And that's where 99% of the traders at the end of the day fail on. Talking about technical analysis, let's talk about lesson number two which has everything to do with technical analysis and a profitable trading system. Lesson number two is always enter where the majority of the market is getting stopped out. And guys, now to elaborate on this lesson, I'm gonna need my chart. So let's move over to my desk. So guys, in order to explain to you guys to find out where the majority of the market is getting stopped out, I'm having a Bitcoin chart in front of me. And what we can see over here, and this is the only way how you can find out where the majority of the market is getting stopped out. Because at the end of the day, that's all that we really want to know. But how do we figure out where the majority is actually going to get stopped out? In order to find out where the majority is getting stopped out, we need to analyze price action from the past because at the end of the day, we want to figure out where retail traders are getting their stop loss placed, right? Because then we can find out where the majority is having their stop loss. So then we can find out where we want to enter. And in order to find out where retail is putting their stop, we need to figure out what they're doing. Are they opening longs? Are they opening shorts? 
what is their RR looking like? And in order to find out what retail is doing, we need to analyze price action from the past. And over here, I'm having a beautiful example on Bitcoin. Because what we can see over here on the Bitcoin chart, when I move to the one hourly time frame, is that Bitcoin was seeing several pushes towards the upside over here. And while getting these pushes towards the upside, what we were seeing is that Bitcoin was breaking through previous highs over here. So when Bitcoin breaks through previous highs like this, get into the mind of the retail trader. What are they doing? They're opening up long positions right over here, guys. Targeting potential breakouts. How so? Because retail thinks that once Bitcoin breaks out above this high, for example, and closes candles above, that they're looking at a valid break of structure. But we know that this is not a valid break of structure. And instead, this is a low probability break of structure. How so, Yip? Because of the fact that the high that we break through over here is an insignificant high to break. And therefore, this is not a valid break of structure. Now, if we can identify the difference between valid and invalid break of structures, we can identify what retail traders are doing. Opening up invalid and low probability breakout long positions. Same for the break over here. Opening up low probability breakout long positions. Now, when we figure out the fact that they're opening up long positions, right? We can also figure out where they're going to place their stop loss. Now, when I'm a retail trader and I want to open up a long position over here, what low am I using for my stop loss? Obviously, I'm going to be using the low that initiated this impulse over here that gave me the break of that high. So this is the low that they're using to cover their stop loss. The people that open up breakout long positions over here because of this impulse and this break of structure over here, where they're going to place a stop loss? Exactly. At the beginning of that impulse over here, which means that by analyzing this price action over here, this piece of price action from the past, we can figure out what retail is doing, aka what the majority of the market is doing and where the majority of the market is placing their stop loss. Now, when I play this chart over here, we can see that indeed the price purchase those liquidity pools, right? It takes out the stop losses of the retail traders. And after taking the stops of the retail traders, price is pushing back towards the upside. So once again, if you figured out in this case that the bigger trend was towards the upside and we want to enter where the majority is getting stopped out, we knew that the majority was getting stopped out over here and that the majority was getting stopped out over here, right? And at this low, could be a valid low to cover your stop loss. In that case, we could have been looking for longs over here with our invalidation over here, or looking for longs over here with that same invalidation. Because we were able to figure out where the majority of the market was getting stopped out. And that is always the area where you want to look for potential longs targeting higher levels on the Bitcoin price. Now, if we're able to do this, guys, that's the only thing we need in order to start looking at the executions for potential trades, not only on Bitcoin, but also on Ethereum and altcoins. Once your trading system has provided you with the trigger to start looking for longs or for shorts, in order to execute your trades, so to actually enter your trade, all that you want to be doing is figure out where the majority of the market is getting stopped out, and you will be using that area as your POI to execute your long or short positions. Capital preservation is more important than profits. And now this is something that once again will trigger a lot of people because everyone is so focused on making profits that in the process of wanting to make profits, they forget by far the most important thing, building and preserving your capital. Because guys, think about it for a second. How are you going to become a profitable trader? How are you going to make a living out of trading if you have no capital to trade with? right? So you always got to start at the beginning. And without capital, you're not going to be able to grow your capital. So you're not going to be able to make profits. So you're simply not going to be able to pay the bills with trading. Now, especially if you're still a beginning trader or a medium trader. And I know that the people that are watching this video at that don't know yet if they're a consistently profitable trader, right? They're watching this video and you know that I'm talking about you. You're not a consistent profitable trader yet. Otherwise, why would you be watching this video in general? Now, if you're one of those dudes that is indeed watching and isn't consistently profitable yet, start at the beginning for fuck's sake. Start by preserving your capital. 
Because while you are building a profitable strategy and you are working your ass off, make sure to not lose too much money in the process of building the profitable trading system. And now I'm not a fan of demo trading. So I want you guys to put some capital at risk whenever you enter a trade, because that also comes with the psychology aspect of trading. And now in this video, I obviously also explain how important psychology is. So start risking that capital, but do it in a solid manner. Do it in a way that the first thing that you think about is preserving your hard-earned capital. Because once again, guys, without capital, you will never be able to make profits. So even though this is not the lesson that most of you guys want to hear, but even I sometimes still struggle with this. Because if the market is in certain environments where I don't feel comfortable trading my system, the first thing that I have to think about is preserving my capital. Because I know that there will be better market environments where my trading system is thriving again. So even for the people that are watching and are even close to a profitable trading system, or maybe you are already that consistently profitable trader, this lesson still applies to you because there will be certain market environments or certain market trends that don't suit your system too well. But over a longer period of time, you know that the environments where your system is thriving are going to return back to the markets. Now, if that environment is returning back to the market, you need to make sure that you have capital to trade with and that you have capital to grow because only then we are able to make profits. So when you are watching this video, whether you're a profitable trader or unprofitable trader, I truly don't care. And I've been saying this in, 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 in today's video as well. Stop focusing on making profits. Start focusing on refining your strategy and becoming the profitable trader. But in that journey, of becoming that consistently profitable trader, focus on step one, which is preserving your capital. Guys, gaining 10% a month consistently on your trading account isn't realistic. And also, there is no golden nugget in trading every well-branded strategy all comes down to the exact same thing and this is something that will trigger a lot of people right because a lot of us get into trading expecting to gain 10 20 30 hell some people even showcase every single month how they gain 50 percent on their trading account but i'm not here to sell you guys a dream i'm here to teach you guys the realistic way of trading and building your portfolio and trading account. And gaining 10% a month isn't even realistic. There will be months where you play break even. There will even be months in your trading career where you have been consistently profitable for multiple years, where you might even end the month in a net loss. It's gonna be part of the game. And truly from the bottom of my heart, the influencers and the traders that showcase that you need to gain at least 10% a month, 20% a month. And like I said, there's even traders that showcase how they gain 50% every month. If that is being taught to you guys, they're giving you guys the wrong perception. It's not the reality of trading. Same goes for people trying to showcase how they have the golden nugget and how their trading strategy is the only strategy that works. At the end of the day, guys, trust me, it all comes down to two things when it comes down to technical analysis. Price section and liquidity, right? Even I, I use ranges as well a lot. But ranges are being formed by certain price section behavior at the end of the day. So the people that showcase how they have the golden nugget, the people that showcase to you guys how you should be gaining at least 10% a month in order to call yourself a profitable trader and you need to do that like for six months in a row, they're out of their minds, okay? I'm here to teach you guys the, 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 the true reality of trading. It's a hard journey. Even I nowadays, when I'm consistently profitable for years, and I can say that out loud with a lot of pride because it has taking me years of effort and losing money and, and blowing up accounts and literally sleepless nights so now i can proudly say with a lot of pride that i'm a profitable trader 
even I sometimes play break even for the month, right? When there wasn't a lot of price action during summer in 2024, which is probably when you're watching this video, there were three months that I played break even. But the months prior to that, during April and March of 2024, there were months where I gained over 24% of my account. So that's the reality at the end of the day. But I know that over a longer period of time, I'm going to be net profitable. And my target usually is around 4 to 5% a month. Guys, if you understand the power of compound interest, and you have a decent sized portfolio, and it takes a long time to build a decent sized portfolio, you know that four to 5% a month is going to add up swiftly and is going to offer major, major profits. So stop targeting 10% a month, stop targeting 20% a month, even stop targeting profitable months. What you should be targeting instead is refine your strategy, refine your trading system, and make sure to always look for the highest probability trades out there and try and take the best possible trades every single day. That's the only thing that you should be focusing on in my opinion. So stop targeting unrealistic profit targets and instead focus on improving your trading system, improving your personality and fucking become a profitable trader. Liquidity isn't as easy as simply marking out previous highs and previous lows. And now guys, this is such a common misconception in trading, in my opinion, but also in the opinion of all the millionaire traders that I've been speaking to over the past few weeks and months. Because all that I'm seeing when I ask people to mark out the liquidity is people marking out previous week highs, previous week lows, previous month highs, previous month lows, and that kind of stuff. Guys, it's completely nonsense because if liquidity was truly that easy, every single donkey and every single retail trader would be able to mark out liquidity on the chart. And now liquidity in price section is the foundation of trading and technical analysis. So in that case, retail traders would be able to master liquidity in a matter of a week, even in a matter of one hour of explaining it. Because if all that I've had to explain to people what liquidity is and how to identify liquidity on a chart is by marking out previous highs and previous lows, it would be w way too fucking easy, obviously. Now, liquidity isn't that simple. Liquidity is being engineered by human reactions based off previous price action. We always want to figure out where the retail traders are placing their stops. Now, in order to figure out where the retail traders are placing their stops, we need to figure out what the fuck they're doing. And we can figure out what the fuck they're doing if we figure out what their human reaction will be to previous price action from the past. So certain price action showing on a graph. And because of that certain price action, retail traders are reacting in a certain manner. Because they are reacting in a certain manner, they're placing their stop loss at certain highs and certain lows. But not necessarily at previous week highs and previous week lows. No certain highs and certain lows. Now I've created a YouTube video on this where I go into this concept very much in depth, very much into detail, and I've uploaded it a few weeks ago on my YouTube channel. I want you guys to start watching this video after you finish watching this one, because that one with charts included and everything, will truly let you guys master liquidity. If you watch that video and understand that video, you will master liquidity.